We are not in our studio today because um, I have no electricity in the house. I don't know when it's going to come on, but um, we're going to go ahead and make the best of it. And um, looks like it might I might be in the dark a little bit. It's no light in the house, just a little bit of daylight out there that uh, is coming through the house. I keep my house dark. Nevertheless, um, we're going to go with some notes here because everything, and I'm running off of battery. I think I have enough battery to get through this on um, on my laptop because it actually runs the camera too. So um, let's shoot for this and see if we can get something accomplished today on our podcast. Sunday morning we talked about the blessing and how God activates what he has predetermined to take place before the foundation of the world through speaking, through letting it be known. And you think, well, why would he do that? Because Faith coupled with hearing is what works. For instance, in Hebrews it says they did not enter the land because they could not and did not mix what they heard with faith. Now think about that. They couldn't enter into the promised land because they did not, this is in Hebrews 4, they did not mix what they heard with faith. So God cannot make you accountable for not fulfilling destiny and purpose for your life if he doesn't make that known to you. So he has to speak it. This is what he did with Abraham. Abraham would never have left his his, his family and go to a land, the promised land, unless God say, get thee away from thy family and from your household and go to a land that I'm going to give you. And then He was able to mix his faith with what he heard. And Hebrews 11 says, He left not knowing whither. Meaning he did not even know where he was going. He just knew he was going to follow the Lord and go to a land he'd never been to before. And so God has to uh, unveil. He has to reveal what he's doing in your life. Or you will not have faith to mix with it. So we go to the Old Testament and we find that Abraham pronounced a blessing on Isaac. In other words, God had already predetermined what he was going to do in Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Israel, the whole gamut of God already had planned out. Let me give you some scripture on that. It says in Ephesians 1.11 that God um, predetermined where he works everything after the counsel of his own will. So we know that God has predetermined, predestined is the word that they use in Ephesians. We have been predestined, called out, chosen before the foundation of the world. Jeremiah says it's not within man to map out his own life. So that means it's not up to us to figure out our destiny. It's not up to us randomly picking and choosing and fulfilling what we call life. Nope. What we've got to do is find out what the blueprints are that God has raised us to called inheritance. And then we hear what God is doing. We sense what God is doing. God can speak in many different ways. But faith has to be coupled with what we hear and what we see from the heavenly realm. So you can't not accomplish on earth unless you see and hear what God is doing in heaven. And that's where we've been for several weeks now. But I want to add to that... A little bit of something that Lord laid on my heart to share, and it has. And we started. We got into it a little bit Sunday morning. So we know that He told Jeremiah that I knew you before you were in your mother's womb, and that I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. So before Ab- or before Jeremiah was born, God already determined what He would do in Jeremiah's life, and so. We look at Psalms 139 and it says, All the days of my life was written before I lived the first one. So God's already got this thing. He knows the end from the beginning. And what our responsibility is, is to hear Him. Hear what He is unveiling to us in Christ so that we can take our faith and believe it. So what He did with Abraham was He spoke and said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Now if Abraham would have never heard that, Abraham could not have had faith for that, and that would have never been manifested in Abraham's life. God has to speak. Here's what I want you to get. God has to speak, or you can't believe 
and have faith to manifest it on earth. Okay, this is not stuff that just happens to us by osmosis. There has to be a relationship, a cultivation in relationship of seeing heaven, hearing heaven in Christ. Now, Abraham gets that unveiled and he believes and God manifests all the promises to Abraham by what he spoke to Abraham that caused him to believe. Now, Abraham's dying so he'll lay his hands on Isaac, his only son, and pronounce the blessing on him. Again, what is Isaac supposed to believe? He can't live off of his father's faith. So he's got to have some type of correlation, some direct relationship with the father so he can also believe. So he's going to hear what Abraham speaks on behalf of God for his life. Now, Isaac ends up on the deathbed. But he has two sons, and it's Esau and Jacob. Now, by rights, the older gets the most blessing. But Jacob is told by the Lord, and the Lord told Isaac the same thing, and they knew it was a prophetic word. This is not going to happen this time. Esau's not going to get the blessing. Jacob is. The younger is going to get the blessing, making the older serve the younger. And Isaac didn't want to have anything to do with that. Of course, Esau didn't. So Jacob deceives his father into giving him the blessing. Now watch this. As soon as he's done, as soon as he's done, watch what happens here. As soon as he's done, Esau comes in. And Jacob realizes he's been deceived, or I'm sorry, Isaac realizes he's been deceived by Jacob. And so Esau says, well, take, take it back. You know, give me... Nope. Isaac said, hey, I've already pronounced it. Now, isn't that interesting that he's not going to take that back, though he was deceived? You, you, you would think that it would be okay if Isaac said, you know what, I was deceived. No, that doesn't count. I'm pronouncing it on Isaac. He's the older, and I want him. Isaac, Isaac wanted Esau to have the blessing. It was God who switched it and said the older shall serve the younger. But Isaac wouldn't do it. Even though he was deceived, he says, I already pronounced it. Now that's something to think about, because I want you to see how weighty our words are, and we don't have faith in the weightiness of our words. We just say things, and voila, we, whether we mean it or not, they're out there, in the atmosphere. What if, what if, stuff in your life is not happening, happening by osmosis, but that you are eating the your own fruit that comes out of your mouth. And there's all kinds of, and again, we're in the dark here, so um, it's amazing that the camera's even picking me up as dark as it is. So I'm, I'm barely seeing my notes here, so just let me just look at some of this stuff. And again, we're just winging it here. Um, let me just give you some um, some proverbs here. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2 says, We're ensnared by the words of our own mouth. Proverbs 10, 4 um, is another one, that our mouth is a well of life. And Proverbs 18, 21 is, Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 12, 4 talks about that we will be satisfied by what comes out of our mouth the fruit of our mouth. So you're eating the fruit of your mouth, whether you're satisfied by it or not. And um, so, and there's another one, Proverbs 13, 2. You can look these up, and it talks about the fruit of our mouth. Now think about all everything I just said, but especially this one, that death and life is in the power of the tongue. James talks about how we really need to um, um, bridle, bridle our tongue. So these are just some scriptures to look at. And, um, but the big one is Jesus in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, when he makes this statement. i got to hurry up because we're running out of daylight here. Everything's getting dark on us here. Um, but anyway, uh, Matthew talks about how we will have to take an account for the words that come out of our mouth. By the words that come out of our mouth, we will either be condemned 
or we will be justified. Now, putting all those scriptures together, I would say we're not pulling something out of the atmosphere and making something up. When you take all these about the, the, our mouth and speaking and um, Jesus even talking about being careful of words that come out of our mouth because they will either condemn us or they'll justify us. Meaning this, what comes out of your mouth, because he goes on, if I'm not mistaken, i got to hear on my notes, um, by your words you will be justified or you will be condemned. So taking an account for what comes out of our mouth, watching over the words that we speak. Now, why would we do that? Because God does it. In Jeremiah 1.18 it says he watches over his words to perform it. Now God watches over his words to perform those words. And we need to speak what we're hearing. We need to speak what we're seeing. Because Jesus says, I only speak what I hear my Father say. So Jesus is just echoing heaven. How come you and I are not echoing heaven? We're making this stuff up as we go along. We speak what we see. We speak negativity. We speak see things and speak what we see down here on earth. Our whole conversation is is completely influenced by what we hear down here and what we see down here. And that's not how we're supposed to uh, speak. We're supposed to speak from heaven on earth. He even told Joshua that the words of this book shall not depart where? Out of your mouth. So prosperity, success is the result of what you speak. In Joshua, it's the book of the law. In the New Testament, it's, it's the Bible, of course, but it's what you're hearing and seeing from heaven. If I'm not hearing something out of heaven, and I'm not seeing something out of heaven, I need to keep my mouth shut and be a person of few words. We're not people of few words. So with all that in mind, and I'm not going to be long because it's re- I could really drag this thing out, but I really want you to... Um, get a hold of what I'm saying here. Let me look at my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything, because I want to get somewhere with this. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, it's an interesting, God, through Paul, God speaking through Paul, says to the church that we are to season our conversations with grace. Isn't that interesting? That our conversation needs to be like you add salt to something, you add grace to your conversations. Now, why would he have us do that? Why would God have us, you know, be be that way? Because our words are either going to be... Because if you read on in Colossians 4, he says, Season your conversation with grace, uplifting the people that are hearing you speak. Have you ever, by what you spoke, brought people down? You just, you just, you just brought them down. There's, there's, you, you were negative, you were full of unbelief, and you just change the whole tone, the whole climate, the whole landscape of the living room or the kitchen or your workplace because of what came out of your mouth. You, if, if it didn't happen to you, I guarantee you've seen it happen in other people's lives where they basically, um, everything was going great till someone showed up, said some things, and the whole, the whole atmosphere changed. Rather than charging it up with faith, they charge it up with unbelief and negativity. So your mouth can control a climate, an atmosphere. And the people that are around you are either uplifted by what's coming out of your mouth or they're not uplifted by what comes out of your mouth. Therefore, as believers, we need to speak grace-oriented words. Speak grace-oriented words. All right? Now, again, I'm running out of time, and you can see we're getting dark here, so... Let me, because I'd have no clue. I've, I've had electricity go off in this house for hours on end. So uh, well, that's why we're doing this. Otherwise, check this out. Here's the big one. Malachi. You got to check this out. Malachi 3.16. And Malachi 3.16 talks about a book of remembrance. And here's where I want to go with all this. Malachi 3.16 talks about God listening to our conversations with one another, and then putting them in a book of remembrance. Check that out. <laughs> the book of, so when we get to heaven, conversations 
God remembers the good conversations. In other words, only the good conversations get put in the book of remembrance. Bad conversations, he's not going to put them in the book of remembrance. They're covered by the blood anyway. We're not going to be held accountable in heaven. This stuff's all about what we're releasing with the fruit of our lips in earth today that we're going to eat the fruit of our lips. We're going to eat negativity. We're going to eat it. Unbelief. We're going to... Let me tell you something. When Israel would not go into the land, God said, I'm going to give them what came out of their mouth. Now think about it. They had to eat the fruit of what they spoke. Numbers chapter 14. Check it out. They could mix it with faith. They, so God gave them what they believed. It was unbelief, but they believed in the giants more than what God had spoken. And many Christians believe more in what the world is saying to them than what the Bible says to them. When you line up your words with what you're hearing on media, what you're hearing from religious people that are not lined up with God's word, you are going to eat the fruit of that. It's almost like God watches over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.18, he watches over his word to perform it. So when you're speaking God's words, he's going to watch over your words to perform them. And when you're not speaking God's words, he says you're going to eat the fruit of that too. Now what about our conversations with one another? See, when we get to heaven, um, you know what? Let me, let me do this real quick. I got, I got something here. Hold on a minute. I got this big dictionary right here. See that right there? Look how thick that thing is. Look how thick that dictionary is. Now when you get to heaven, can you imagine God going, hey, Every, all your conversations were so seasoned with grace, so uplifting, so glorifying to me, I wrote them all down. This is my book of remembrance of all the stuff you said. Man, how you were uplifting and how you glorified me and so forth and so on. Now, some of us, because we're so negative, we have a few pieces of paper. And God's like, where's my... You get up there and you're like, where's my book of remembrance, God? Where's my book of remembrance? And God says right here, so that's a piece of paper. Yeah, well, you know what? You are so negative. You, you, you weren't echoing what I was saying. You weren't glorifying to me in, in common. I couldn't record it. I'm not going to record garbage. I'm not going to record negativity and unbelief. You know, you had a few good conversations, and you know, I stapled them together. There's a few, about three pages here. I, I did staple them, though, Greg. There, there you have it. And here is your spouse, look, or your best friend, or um, hopefully your pastor. Look at the book that they got. And you're going to, uh, unbelievable. Now, how come we never heard this? How come we never heard this? Huh? Why have we never heard Malachi 3.16? It's almost like God is your Google. God is your Alexa. He's listening in on you. He's listening in on your conversations. You know, he doesn't believe in the, the Patriot Act. I mean, he's going to go right in there and listen to everything that you're saying. And if he likes what you're saying, he's going to write it down in a book, call it the Book of Remembrance. So that when you get to heaven, man, you're I don't know what kind of rewards you're going to get from that, but I'm going to tell you what. Every, I mean... He's not writing down idle words because Jesus told us in Matthew 12, 36, every idle word, which you know what idle means? Non-effective. A non-working word. God can't work with that stuff coming out of your mouth. And he's definitely not going to write it down. So I don't know what kind of books because I was never taught this. I'm telling you, I can be negative. I think we're all guilty. And this is not to shame anybody or condemn anybody. But... Um, you ever talk? I mean, what what if what are you what are you saying to your friends, your spouse, behind closed doors? Because with God, there's no such thing as behind closed doors. It's open air with God, and He either sees it as idle words, or He's going to see it as uplifting, seasoned words with grace, and He's going to write them down in a book of remembrance. And 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 when I read when I came across this, I thought, wow. Man, I've had some bad conversations with people behind closed doors, even about other people in the past. And I'm like, and that isn't right. But it's not about what's... We're not, we're not going to do this. We're not going to be religious about this and condemn people and shame people because of what's been said. It's over. Put it in the past. 
It's under the blood. But from here on out, you're now responsible to season your... Con Colossians 4, 6. Season your conversations with grace. Make sure they're faith-filled words. Faith meaning this. I'm echoing what I hear in heaven. Because what I hear in heaven is what I'm going to speak. And I'm going to eat the fruit of what I hear in heaven. Because God's watching over those words I'm hearing in heaven and speaking. And go back to the Old Testament. There, God has, has to speak to you so your faith can line up with what he's speaking to produce the fruit of it. And when it comes out of your mouth as faith-filled words, you will manifest it on earth as it is in heaven. There's a lot of stuff not being manifested on earth because we're, number one, we're not lining up our words echoing what we hear in heaven because people are not echoing anything from heaven. They're echoing what they hear on the media. They're echoing what they feel, what they think. God, Guys, God does not care what you feel and he does not care what you think. What he cares about is you speak what you hear in heaven, what you what you hear in your spirit, what you what you what you read in the word of God. You line up your life according to the word of God. He watches over his word so he can perform it. And if you're not speaking that word, he can't perform it. But you will eat the fruit of negativity. You'll eat the fruit of, of, of what you're hearing, what you're seeing. I am not to echo earth. When he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let me see what time I got here. When I, when I see in the Bible where he says pray on earth as it is in heaven. So what am I supposed to pray? What I see? What I hear on earth? Nope. I am to pray. Pray is speak. Prayer is speaking. I am to speak what on earth, on earth, what I hear in heaven. Now this is part of the series, On Earth As It Is In Heaven, through our podcast, because it's important that we understand that the blessing that we see all through the Old Testament had to be spoken. This stuff doesn't happen by, oxy, by um, osmosis. Watch this. So, because this stuff doesn't happen by osmosis, and God needs you, your faith to line up with what you hear by speaking it, because Paul says in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, we believe, therefore we spoke. He said it twice in that scripture. We believe, therefore we spoke. So, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the words of God. If it's true faith, you will speak what you hear. And in that speaking manifestation comes. Manifestation comes when our words line up with his words called speaking. And so if you want to be part of manifesting on earth as is in heaven, right here, this mouth, this mouth, right here, this mouth is either a tool that is harming you in your personal life because you're going to eat the fruit of the negativity and the unbelief. Or that mouth is blessing you by speaking faith-filled words you hear in heaven. And when you hear them in heaven and you speak them, you're going to eat the fruit of them, Meaning you're going to enjoy the benefit, the blessing that comes to you by what you speak on earth out of what you hear in heaven. So, I know we weren't long tonight. But I'm, you know, I'm in the dark. Not literally. Well, yeah, literally, but not spiritually. Not spiritually. I'm not in the dark. But I just want to, you to, to see this. James had it. James understood this to a degree. I don't know how much. Bridle the tongue, man. Bridle the tongue. What, what, understand, two things I want you to learn from tonight. Is bridle your tongue because you're going to eat the fruit of it. Good, bad. You're going to eat the fruit of what comes out of your mouth. Too many scriptures in the Bible that declares that. The other thing is, when you're having conversations with somebody, again, words, words, do they end up in the book of remembrance? Or does God have to go, oh, my Lord, oh, I can't write that down, and I won't write that down. So, 
man, are you going to get this in heaven? Where God is like, you you just, your conversations were awesome. They were so uplifting, so so encouraging, so glorifying to me. I'm right, I had to write, look, and it's, it's a whole volume of them. Or is it going to be just the three pieces of paper that he staples together? <laughs> that's, about all you, that's about all you got. That's about all you got. I'm going to tell you something. I read that. I'm like, Lord God, forgive me. I've had some bad conversations. And I've also said things that are just stupid that I hear someone say, echo, what, some negativity or whatever. We've got no business. We've really, our words, it says in, in the Old Testament that the prophet Samuel, his words did not fall to the ground. What does that mean? God, they weren't idle words that just fell to the ground that God couldn't use. His words, they say, were weighty. And they produced what was spoken. I think we need to talk less and quit running off at the mouth over everything we feel and think or hear and filter our language, filter our thoughts and feelings through heaven, through the word. This is going to be hard to do. That's why James says, man, bridle that tongue. Bridle that tongue. And I want to leave you with those encouraging words today.